I'm Jacques from Hobie, and this is your quick start video for Mirage inflatable kayaks. This is a Mirage I-11S. We also uh, have the 9, the 12, and the Tandem 14 model. These instructions will quickly get you out on the water in any of those models. This is an I-11S that we're going to remove from the bag now and pump it up. All Hobie kayaks ship complete, including a standard inflation pump. This is a high volume pump. It pumps up all the inflatable kayaks really quickly. There is an optional electric pump, but you'll always need the standard pump to get enough pressure to make the boat stiff enough and rigid enough on the floor to make it work really well. Um, that's about five PSI. Three to five is what you'll need. There's three chambers that you're going to be filling. You'll just remove the cap. That's going to expose your valve here. Now when you deflate the boat, the way that you get the air to come out is you push down and turn clockwise and that holds the valve open so that all the air will escape. You should leave it open like this when you fold it and you put it back in the bag. That way it, it packs down real nice and tight. So typically when you come to pump up your kayak for the first time after it comes out of the bag, you're going to just go counterclockwise and let this pop up so that when you are pumping it up, the air is going to just go one way. That's a one-way valve, and it won't come back out. Inflatable kayaks come with a Vantage CTI chair now, and when we ship them from the factory, they are uh, disassembled so that they pack down a little bit more tightly. So it'll come compact like that with two screws that you'll install. Um, you probably will never need to take those screws back out, and you may not have to install these yourself because the dealer might be doing this for you, but we're going to install them now. So your Vantage CTI chair has two different leg settings. There's four legs, there's a high position and a low position, and it's adjustable by installing the legs into the seat bottom frame. There's some slots here and indexes on these parts to make it foolproof to where you can't do it the wrong way. So you just install it. I suggest starting off in the low position, so that would be with the longer arm going horizontal and the shorter arm going into the frame. And you'll want to do all four at the same level. You can't have the rear in a high position and the front in the low. So all four need to be matching. So I'm going to start, I'm going to rig this seat in the low position. Now that we have that ready to go, we can drop it into position in the kayak. You'll notice on the floor of the kayak, there's three different locations for the chair. So if you're taller, you want to move that back. Uh, if you're, you know, a shorter person or a child, perhaps you'll want to move it forward. So I'm just going to put this in the center position to start. And once you have that in place, and now we'll just buckle the seat into position using the four attachment points in the kayak. I'll get them all hooked up first, and then we'll cinch them down so that they're equally tensioned on all four corners. The main adjustable parts of the Vantage chair are going to be the seat back angle, which is adjusted with this lever here. When you pull it out, the seat will retract and go more vertical, and then when you lean back on it, it will lay back so you can recline. The second adjustment's right here for your lumbar. This is uh, controlled by a BOA. You can see how that unwinds. So if you want more 
uh, more dish or more bolstering on the sides. You want to have that loose. If you're somebody who likes to have a tight lumbar, you'll push that click in and turn it clockwise, and that will tighten up the bottom of the seat back, giving you a real nice support. And this seat will break in after you use it a bit. Next up, we're going to attach our steering mechanism. Um, on the Vantage CTI chair, there are attachments on either side. So if you want to control the rotor with your left hand, you can install it on this side. You can install it on the right. It's personal preference. There's two different channels here on the handle where you can mount it onto the seat. Uh, if you're in the high position, you can mount it all the way outboard. So that would be the inside channel. It gives you a little bit further reach. Uh, if you like to have a closer reach or if you're in the low position on a 12 or a 14, the side tubes on that model are a lot bigger. So you'll have some interference here. So it's designed to go a little bit tighter against your, your, your thigh right here, but there's still plenty of clearance. I prefer the inside because I have short arms. And then there's a set screw on the bottom where you're just gonna tighten that up and that'll hold it in position. And again, you can do this uh, on either side and then you'll have rudder control right at, at thigh level. Really comfortable. The rudder up-down controls are located on the right side of the kayak. You're gonna pull the green line to take the rudder and put it in the down position. Important part here is that you cleat the rudder line so that it stays locked down and you have proper rudder function. To raise the rudder back up, you're just gonna uncleat the green line and then pull on the red tab and that's gonna bring your rudder back up when you hit the beach. So whichever side of the kayak you decide to use your steering on, there's these covers here so you can route your steering line over to one side or the other and keep your cargo area clear. We ship our kayaks with the Mirage Drive partially assembled. Uh, you will have to install the crank arms and pedals. They are marked right and left, but if you have any question, this is the way they should, they should look to you. And we're gonna just install those on a Mirage Drive right now. Uh, this is only when we initially ship the boat. Once you've assembled your, your Mirage Drive, these can just stay in place. You won't be taking these out. So the way you install that is you just get the crank arm in, you align the pin, and then you're ready to go with your, your bolt. And these will be threading into the plastic drum. You'll need a 9 16 wrench, like so, or a socket. Or if you're in Europe or say Australia or somewhere that has metric, a 15 millimeter is what you'll be using to get that tight. And when you're getting to be tight, you'll want to just make sure that you've got a little bit of a space there. You don't want it to be over tight because it's essential that the crank arm still be able to move. And it is possible to over tighten this, which will interfere with the function of the adjustment on the pedals. Now we're ready to install your Mirage Drive. So the proper way to install the Mirage Drive into the kayak is to have the rigid portion of the fins facing forward and you'll just get that lined up straight and when those click in place these will be facing forward and that'll be locked in place. You've got your adjustment here, you just squeeze the handle and you can move that crank arm forwards or backwards and give yourself a lot of room. If you're a tall guy you'll go forward obviously. If you're for your child, maybe you'll come back. And you wanna keep these numbers here on this scale equal so that you have equal amount of pedaling. Uh, proper adjustment on this would be like a slight bend in your knee when you're fully extended. And lastly, you'll just hook the bungee that's in the cockpit onto the crank arm. And what that does is it keeps the fins up against the bottom of your kayak so that you can come into the beach and not have to uh, worry about hitting the bottom. And we'll just assemble the paddle. This inflatable kayak paddle actually comes as a four piece so you can remove the blades. What that allows you to do is to pack it down in the bag for shipping or for transport. And then you'll just clip it on the side. So all Hobie inflatable kayaks ship complete with a Mirage Drive, a seat back, a paddle, a pump. They're complete, ready to go out of the box. Uh, this particular model, the I-11S, also can be used as a stand-up paddle board. So it comes with an optional fin that you can use uh, with an optional stand-up paddle. Uh, you'll also receive a repair kit. In the kit, there's a valve replacement tool, some glue. Uh, the glue actually has about a one-year shelf life, so uh, if you need to make a repair and you've had your kit for a while, 
you'll probably want fresh glue. It also comes with material patches that match your board or your kayak in this case. And lastly, you're going to receive a lot of paperwork. There's a booklet here with everything that you're going to need for your kayak, including the warranty registration paperwork. Uh, the owner's manual, the owner's manual is very important. You're going to want to read this front to back, learn about the kayak. And uh, last but not least is an accessories catalog. In the catalog, there's everything from A to Z, including all your safety equipment, things like personal flotation devices. Um, you can even add a sail kit to some of the other models. This particular model doesn't take a sail kit, but the 9, the 12, the 14, you can turn those into a sailboat, which is really nice. And again, if you've purchased your kayak secondhand, perhaps, and you don't have the literature, everything's available as a free download on our website, hobiecat.com. Look for the product support link, and everything there is digitally uh, formatted, and you can download that. And call your dealer if you have any questions, 1-800-HOBIE-49. Um, or use our dealer finder on our website again at Hobie Cat. This is our quick start video. Hope that this has helped you get on the water quickly, and we'll see you on the water. Have a great day.